everyone, how are you? Welcome again. Today we are looking at Genesis chapter 18. So if you're there today, I pray that it's a blessing to you. I hope that you're following us. You need to keep um, to keep up and just listen or watch uh, through our channel. Um, also, I would like to invite you for our Bible studies here in Nairobi. Come on Fridays at Highlands Platinum. Now, Genesis 18, oh wait, Highlands Platinum at 6 p.m. in the evening, okay? We're going to have fun. And also at Ngong, Sungura Plaza on Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. So, karibu sana. Genesis chapter 18 is a wonderful scripture or a wonderful portion of scripture. It's perhaps for me, it's one of the, my favorites uh, in the book of Genesis. I have many favorites, but and this is one of it. So, the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Again, you know, this is an interesting relationship between God and, and Abraham. So God just appears to him and, and begins to, you know, to talk to him. And in this case, we see that this scripture opens with the Lord appeared to Abraham. Okay. But this kind of appearance will not be the usual kind of appearance that we are used to seeing God and Abraham having. So, the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. This is a wonderful time. It's maybe during the day. He's just relaxing and just resting and maybe just... Uh, Taking a nap, we do not know, but he was sitting. There is a tendency of old people just sitting, you know, and, and watching and taking in and maybe reflecting on life. And I think there's a practice that many old people have. Old people, when I say old, is 80s and 90s. They reflect back on life and how it's, it has been. Sometimes I like to think of myself as a 90-year-old or whatever, 92, 93 year old. And I like to look back into my life and 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 just ask myself, what what reflections do I have? What do I regret? What have I not done? What would I have done differently? You know, and, and sometimes it gives you a sobering, uh, a sobering thing. It gives you soberness at that time. So Abram looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. So, the Bible begins, this chapter, Genesis chapter 18, begins with the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre. Okay? He appeared to Abraham. And Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. It's almost, I can't, I can't, I'm trying to imagine they were standing were they, do they, were they standing as if they were lost? Or were they standing looking at Abraham? Like, I, I don't really know. But I want to think they were standing looking at Abraham and, and just waiting for him to, to come, okay, or to do something. And so when he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them. And, and when he met them, he bowed low to the ground. Now, the question is, did Abraham know that these were uh, these were angels or this was the man of, 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 of they were men of God no I don't think he did but he said if I have found favor in your eyes my Lord do not pass your servant by let a little water be brought and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant, you know. Uh, okay, okay, wait, wait a minute. Because because this is something that we have to really grasp. And and when I read this chapter, I am sometimes, I'm surprised at God. Verse 1 begins by saying, the Lord appeared to Abraham, okay. So by now we know this is the Lord, or the Lord is among these three people. And then verse 2 says that Abraham looked up and he saw three men, three men, okay, three men standing by. And when he saw them, he ran towards them. And he said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord. So 
the the word my lord how it's used here doesn't co- doesn't um, uh, connote the lord god it simply uh, 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 tries to it shows that he was addressing this person as what we would call sir in today's world it's like if i have found favor in your eyes sir okay so this is not um uh, lord as we know him because even in my bible it's not in capital because when the bible talks about the lord god the word lord is in capital but when it talks about addressing a person with respect as my lord it doesn't put it in capital so this is not capital so he said if i have found favor in your eyes my lord do not pass your servant by now another thing that we learn that i learned from this is that Abraham was seriously a humble man because this guy was already rich he was so rich he had uh, you know created a lot of problems by by his wealth by just being rich and most rich people don't bow to other people most rich people don't go inviting people into their homes most rich people don't go calling themselves servants in the presence of other people which tells me that something either Abraham was very very humble or the likeness of these three men was not the normal likeness that we would say maybe abram looked at them and they're like okay these are not normal people but we do not see that again we don't see that in the bible these are assumptions okay and so but then another thing that i notice is that these men had dust on their feet this is god we are talking about These are angels that we are talking about. And so Abraham says, let a little water be brought and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Now, the washing of feet signified or or symbolized that they were they had not just symbolized but showed or proved that they had walked a long distance and so they had a uh, dusty feet that needed to be washed. They also looked exhausted. Now this is from Abraham's perspective. I'm not saying that that is what was written, but this is from Abraham's perspective. Otherwise he would not offer them water to wash their feet if he could see that their feet were clean. They must have been dusty. So then he says, you may wash all your, wash your feet and rest under this tree. Okay? Now, what does that tell us? Several things that when god takes on human form he takes he takes full human form he doesn't take half half now remember from verse 1 three men remember verse 1 the lord appeared verse 2 three men okay three people abraham saw three men standing by and he went for them let me get you something to eat so he offers hospitality he gives tremendous he was a hospitable man a hospitable man he was also very humble and he was also a, a man who designed things and so let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant so again we see abram doesn't know the mission of this man abram doesn't know this man abram doesn't know why they are here but he must he knows they are going somewhere he doesn't think they were coming to his house okay because they have not announced that we are coming to your house so he doesn't think they are coming to his house and so he tells them that you may go on your way now that you have come to your servant you know allow yourself to imagine allow yourself to be in that situation allow yourself to watch it like a movie or like a video and just be somewhere maybe on top of that tree and you're watching down and you're looking at this conversation or just be on the side and you're looking at Abraham and you're looking at these three men and you are in the conversation but you're not part of the conversation and just just have that imagination in the bible look at the great tree the great trees of mamre and these three men and Abraham comes an old man 99 years old you know maybe struggling to walk or able to walk but he's inviting this man and this old man bows to them and says oh please come in and wash your feet and rest under the tree and and have some food so that you can be on your way it's a wonderful experience all right so very well they answer do as you say 
So Abram hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sears of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. So this is a surprise. And one of the other things I like about Sarah is that she was always ready to serve her husband. Okay. Um, other than the issue of Ishmael, Sarah was ready to always serve her husband because most women would not respond very nicely to such uh, uh, to such surprises because a guy runs in and says, quick, hurry, 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 there are people have come. We have guests. You didn't plan for the guests. You didn't have any announcement that the guests were coming. Your husband didn't tell you anything. This would make any woman angry, okay? But Sarah... No, she follows her husband's instructions. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sears of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Very fast, okay? Now that would take a while. If you're a baker, you know that that would take a while. Maybe probably uh, two or three hours. I don't know. But then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. You also know that that would take time, okay? Uh, uh, you know, these are things that when you have guests, these are things you wake up in the morning to start doing so that by the time the guests come, they can eat. They can find the food ready. Now, he then brought some curd and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set this before them, okay? So everything has been prepared. Uh, the, the milk, the curd and the milk, the calf has been prepared and everything that they need has been prepared. And so he comes and sets this before them. Remember, these three guys are angels because verse 1 begins by saying the Lord appeared to him, okay, to Abraham. While they ate, oh my goodness, wait a minute, angels eat. Interesting, like angels eat. <laughs> this is funny. He stood near them and are tree. Now that's even stranger. The guy who is hosting you is watching you eat as he's standing near a tree, you know. So he's looking at, he's there and he's looking down and, and you guys are eating and maybe he's satisfied and he's happy. But then again, this is the Lord we are talking about. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent. So the first question for me uh, would have been, how do you know that my wife is called Sarah? But then again, Abraham was a famous man. He was an influential man. So anyone could have known that first he was married and that his, his wife was Sarah. So that's another question that maybe we could ask. So then in the tent, he said, uh, then the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Whoa. Now, this is it. Now, this is where you begin to ask yourself, how did he know? How did he know that, first of all, my wife is called Sarah? And how did he know that we will have a son? How did he know that God spoke to me? Unless he is God, unless he is the one who actually spoke. But now he has come in the flesh. Ooh, this is powerful. Now, Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. Now, you know the age of childbearing is up to 40 nowadays, but then it can be extended a while. But 90 years old, that's way past, way past. Um, any man can give birth, can can you know, have seed at whatever age, but a woman, 90 years old, too late, man, too late, too way, way, way too late. So because of this, because she knew her age and she knew her strength and she knew where she was, so Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I'm worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? After I'm tired and I'm, I'm done, you know, this is old age. I'm done. Will I still have the pleasure of intimacy with my husband at this age? So she laughed. Then the Lord, 
Now this is capital. The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Wow. How do you feel when you are face to face with God? When God is eating a meal that you prepared for him. When he's seated in your house and you are having a, a normal conversation and he is telling you, I'm going to come back. How does that even make you feel as Abraham? You know, up to this point, we don't see anywhere that God had appeared to Abraham in human form. We see him appearing in different forms. We see him talking. We see him telling Abraham to go out and count the stars. But we are not told that he was there as a man. But in this case, he appears as a man and he talks to Abraham. How does that even feel? Um, try to, I'm trying to think about I'm trying to think of what I would feel if I was feeding someone and they were eating at my house and then I didn't know them and then they talked and suddenly I realized this is the Lord God Almighty seated in my house taking lunch with me. Oh. So the Lord speaks and says, Sarah laughed and asked, why will I really have a child? But then he says, is there anything, is anything too hard for the Lord? And this is a question that we must also ask ourselves reflectively. Is there anything too hard for the Lord in your life? Is there anything too hard? Are you facing a certain circumstance that you feel the time is gone and the time is past? Is there anything, is anything too hard for the Lord? You are feeling ill and sick and you do not know what to do. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. And Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. Now, look at this conversation and how it goes. When the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom. So the truth is they were going somewhere and they were going to Sodom. And Abraham walked along with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Now, these are three men, okay, and they are walking down headed to Sodom. And then the Lord, who is among the three, says, Will I hide anything from Abraham? Then the Lord says, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him, so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what has, what he has promised him. This is God Almighty among the three people, and he's talking and confirming the covenant that he had with Abraham. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin so grievous, that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. My goodness, wait a minute. So the Lord comes to, uh, you know, comes in the company of probably two angels. They come and they appear to Abraham and they get into his house and they have a meal, a wonderful meal, and then they continue on their journey. But as Abraham is seeing them off, they know, God knows, that he's going to Sodom. Up to this point, he has not yet decided, am I going to destroy Sodom or am I going to spare them? And so, But he says, okay, let me go down. So he says, shall I hide anything from Abraham? And so he says, I'm going to talk to him. But then verse 20 captures my attention, verse 20 and 21. Then the Lord says, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin is so grievous. 
like their sin was so grievous that God had to come down, that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. So the question is, what is the outcry? Who made the outcry? And I can assure you, the victims who had been either molested or killed or whatever has happened, those victims, their blood cried out to heaven for vengeance at least. And it was so loud and it was so grievous and it was so um, uh, huge and bad that the Lord had to come down himself to see whether that outcry is worth a punishment. I will go down to see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. What I want to say to you is this. Sometimes the Lord has to come and see for himself. Not that he doesn't know. He knows. But he just tries to save even those he wants to destroy. His mercies are new every morning. And that is just the thing. That if people repented and turned from their ways, the Lord will have mercy upon all. The men turned away and went to Sodom. But Abraham remained standing before the Lord. So there were three men. And now the Bible says the men turned away. When, when the Lord began to have this conversation with Abraham, the men turned from the conversation and went toward Sodom because they had to still go and now have the report. But Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him. Okay, please understand that he, the Lord was not speaking from heaven. He was right there with Abraham. I mean, he had taken lunch at Abraham's house. He had sat at Abraham's seat. He, had, he was there. And, and so the Lord approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Now, I'm trying to imagine how Abraham approached him because now he knows this is the Lord. Okay? So don't just come and say, uh, uh, Will you sweep away the righteous? No. He may, have, he may have been or must have been very humble. And, and approached in a very silent way, and maybe maybe even in a wise way, maybe a diplomatic way, as if to say, uh, will you sweep away the righteous uh, with the wicked? You know, like it's almost as, as if he's asking a question. He just needs direction. Please, will you do this? What if, Abraham says, there are 50 righteous people in the city. Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it. Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? Wow, this is... This is interesting because in truth, God is a judge of all the earth and his justice must be done. And justice is done when it comes to God. Okay? And so he says, Will not the judge of all the earth do right? And this is a good prayer, especially for people who actually seek the face of God. Will not the judge of all the earth do right by you will not the judge of all the earth do what is right now look at what he says the lord said if i find 50 righteous people in the city of sodom i will spare the whole place for their sake wow so in other words it doesn't matter what they have done if there are 50 righteous people i'm gonna spare them then Abraham spoke up again because I think the Lord did a quick scan and there were no 50 people. There were no righteous, 50 righteous people. Then Abraham spoke again, now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes. Again, again, we see the humility. We see the humility. You see, 
when one one day my friends we shall all stand before the lord we shall stand before the almighty god every one of us and on that day we shall see him in all his glory and power and on that day we shall tremble and fear and fall because we will see him in his awesomeness his glory his power we shall see the throne and we shall see everything it will it will terrify people and on that day men and women will bow because of what they will see and they will say jesus you are lord and our humility that time our pride will not be pride and so the lord abram says though i am nothing but dust and ashes and we are nothing but dust and ashes in the presence of the lord we are nothing and 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 the moment we remember this the moment we remember that god is our, is not our age mate that things may happen in our lives but then even when we say oh god we god we, we want to do things then we say god will understand he is not our age mate And Abraham recognizes that he is nothing but dust and ashes. So he says, what if the number of the righteous is five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five people? If I find 45 there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again, he spoke to him, what if only 40 are found there? He said, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. So I think they were having a conversation and then the Lord will scan the city and realize there is no 40. He already knew anyway. But for the sake of Abraham, he would do it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only 30 can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Abraham said, Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only 20 can be found there? He said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only 10 can be found there? He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left and Abraham returned home. What a word. When the Lord seeks to destroy, will you be that one, that righteous one, to stand in the gap? God bless you. Mm-hmm.